am Dr. Josephina John, Assistant Professor, Department of English, ISF, Nirmala College for Women, Coimato. In today's session, I am presenting a critical analysis of the poem, Ode on a Gracian Urn by John Keats. Literature is nothing but an amalgamation of ideas and that, as literature students, we celebrate it. Let's dive deep into the session. The main theme in this poetry is the relation between the beautiful world of art and suffering, of which Keats knew a thing or two. As you can understand from the above, you will understand from the line-wise analysis of the same poem. This idea of human suffering and emotions were the main subject of this poetry. This changed with the Romantic period. The poem Ode on a Gracian Urn from 1819 is one of Keats's most famous poems. Now let's go for the line-wise analysis. The ode on a Grecian urn is about a Greek urn. The urn is addressed to. For example, the use of ode is where you address to an object. You will see that the poet also addresses to the things that he sees in the urn. Let's go for the line-wise analysis. Thou still unravished bride of quietness, the foster child of silence and slow time. Here the poet tries to refer to the urn as a virgin, a bride of quietness, a woman who gets married but at the same at the same time is quiet. And the foster child of silence in slow time represents the foster child not as a biological one but as a child of silence and time. Usually time is fast but here not in this case because we are talking about an urn which is not alive so time passes slowly for it. Sylvan historian who can't thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than our rhyme. Sylvan or Sylvian means of the woods. The word has a pleasant, peaceful connotation. So Sylvan historian means the maker of the urn who presents a pleasant scene in the woods. Maybe one such is a pastoral scene in this poem. What leaf fringe legend haunts about thy shape? of deities or mortals or of both. Of what le legend, old story, framed with leaves can be found around the shape of the urn. So we see that the poet tries to understand the details and intricacies of this particular urn. Of deities and mortals. Deities are gods and mortals are humans. So he says there is an amalgamation of both these pictures in the pictorial representation on the urn. In Tempe or in the Dales of Arcady, what men or gods are these? What maidens both? Tempe is a valley in Greece. A dale is also a valley. Arcady is a region in Greece that is associated with a peaceful and simple country life. A maiden is an old world for girl. Loth means not willing. So what, what don't the girls want? Well, probably to be kissed or more than that. Here we see the poet try to express his ideas of the urn. What mad pursuit, what struggle to escape, what pipes and trimbles, what wild ecstasy. Mad pursuit may refer to the classic scene where fawns who are always in the, in the pursuit of pursuing girls or nymphs. The nymphs or girls then struggle to escape from the men's arms. A maiden again is asked to um, refer here as a struggle to escape and pipes and timbrels are flutes and the timbrel is an ancient tambourine so the music is played and the people of or gods in the picture are going wild in ecstasy they are probably dancing wildly so the poet tries to express a joyous moment heard melodies are sweet but the, those unheard are sweeter therefore he soft pipes play on is one of the most famous lines in this particular poem. The stanza speaks of things that are not seen in the urn. Here we look at the urn, we might hear music in our imagination, but music isn't really there. The speaker of the poem draws our attention to this and he says that the music you, can act, you can't actually hear or the imaginary music is better than the real one. Quite an interesting statement, right? Next line. Forever will thou love and she be fair. His love will be forever and she will forever be beautiful. That's the again, the beauty of eternal love. 
Are happy, happy boughs that cannot shed your leaves, nor ever bid the spring end you, and happy melodists unwearied, for every piping songs forever new. Boughs are branches of a tree, and the branches will never lose or shed their leaves. We knew that already. We were talking about how time can be frozen and how pictures can be frozen in an urn. They never bid the spring of adieu and never said goodbye to spring. It was always spring and eternal. The happy melodist is a happy musician who forever plays his flute songs that are forever new. That leaves a heart. to see another picture of the urn who are these coming to the sacrifice some people are coming to a sacrifice event of an animal and as they're burning the offer to the gods they find something mysterious at the altar at a high place where offerings are made to the gods the priest is leading a young cow a heifer to be sacrificed the cow is lowing and mowing and all the silken flanks with garlands dressed The cow's legs are decorated with flower chains. We find the sacrifice happening in this poem and we little do know about the story behind it. On a mount built mountain built with peaceful citadel, a fort, people in the scene on the urn I imagine to be from a little town. Though the view is from a far away place, we believe that there are people who are lively and living in that particular area. Is empty of people on the morning of worship. which means people who believe and who worship are not found in this particular perspective of the poet the little town is very silent the streets are for everyone and silent as it is they try to talk about the stories of the citadel and the people the people in the scene are on their way to the sacrifice that is what the poet believes so and forever they silent No one will ever come back to explain what the reason of the town being empty was and again it is an example of how the urn is frozen in time and is devoid of human humanity and life O oh, attic shape fair attitude with breed of marble men and maidens outrot attic means from athens the cape capital of greece breed is an interwoven pattern like a braid but here it is a design on the marble The urn is decorated with marble men and women with forests and branches and trodden weeds amongst green trees and plants under their feet maiden marble men and maidens are the ones who sit on this particular urn The poet is talking about the urn again and the quiet urn which doesn't speak challenges our thoughts as much as eternity it is endless time pastoral he calls it the cold pastoral which means the cold sweet and peaceful country life the speaker calls the scene on the urn cold not very sweet it is a paradox here when old age shall come in this generation ways thou shall remain in the midst of other woe when people who live now will grow old and die you the urn will stay in the middle of all kinds of trouble is what the poet tries to emphasize and then the most beautiful lines of the poem then as a friend to man to whom thou sayest that is to a man who is not to us who does not belong to us to the man of the next generation you will be a friend to a man to whom you will say beauty is truth truth beauty that is all that is all you know on earth and all you need to know beauty is truth and truth be beauty the rest of the closing lines may be said by the speaker of the poem and this is all you need to know on earth where beauty is eternal and truth beauty is all that exists and that's the end of the session i hope you really enjoyed it and i also hope it was really informative i wish all of you the best thank you